I was at a party and this guy walks up to me and he goes, bro, look at your hands. And he goes, oh, what are you doing? And I told him about the garden and he said, wow. It's actually a big, big part of it. It signifies a lot, you know, the, the, the change that we've made to, to, for the majority of the time, have dirty hands as opposed to looking nice and clean for people. My favourite part is seeing tiny baby seedlings pop out of the ground. Mm. I very regularly squeal in excitement whenever something new that I haven't seen before pops up and it's worked finally. Red vein sorrel is my current obsession because they're so damn cute. Mm. <laughs> Living this lifestyle with freedom, you know, it's I get to wake up each morning and hear the birds and go down to the creek and the best thing about this job is actually learning each day how to appreciate nature more and more. Something that I didn't have when I was younger and I'm getting better each day, so that's what I like most. I'm Phil. <laughs> I'm Alice. And we are loop growers. L O O P. <laughs> oh God. I'm not gonna spell growers. <laughs> is that because you can't? I can't. <laughs> I can't spell growers. So we essentially set out to set a relationship with a um, food-based business, food or beverage. We also deal with breweries um, in Brisbane uh, to cycle their organic materials onto the farm, compost it, grow food from it, and sell that food back to the venue, um, closing the loop. And each time that system happens, we say the loop strengthens, it gets stronger the relationship improves. We've created a situation where everyone benefits off something that someone else gives. So the cafes are integral because we pick up all of their scraps and then we take the scraps, turn it into compost, put the compost into the soil, grow veggies, sell the veggies back to the cafe. And there's a lot more people in that circle like all of the volunteers that we have, which is huge. We wouldn't be able to do it without them. Friends and family. Yeah. But everyone gets something out of the situation, which I think is the best part because that's what a community does. It actually brings everyone together in a way that it's mutually beneficial rather than being forced into a situation. It's always, it's always hard for us to work out where the loop starts of course because it just keeps sort of feeding into itself but if if you had to pick a place I think it would be the relationship with people what people are throwing out and what they waste because the reality is that a lot of things don't need to be wasted and they are there is there are so many resources that we could be capturing so that's sort of where it begins for us we we again facilitate businesses to be able to divert a lot of their organic matter away from landfill and into an actual usable system. So that's where we come in and we, we capture that yield and bring it out to the farm, compost it in varying different ways around the farm and actually use that to grow food for those very same people. And it really solidifies that relationship that not only those people have with what they're throwing away, but with where their food is coming from, they're appreciated a lot more so they're less likely to then waste it. Hmm. I dislike the word waste. I don't think it exists. The word exists. <laughs> but as a concept, I think it's false. Well, it's something that humans have created. Yeah. Waste doesn't exist in nature. Everything is always used again. Or the, the you know, debris of leaves that fall onto the forest floor are then you know, consumed by worms, and then the worms you know, fertilise the floor for the trees to keep growing. Like Nature is a constant loop, and that's what we're trying to emulate. But in a modern context, in a modern society, where we're not trying to fight that the world is the way it is, but we're trying to bring that natural system back into our modern day society. And initially, the 
entire idea was to create a concept that it wasn't waste, it was there were yields. So people call it food waste and we tried to gently be like, well these if we change the relationship we have at that level, that linguistic level, people will start to be like, oh, that's not waste. I know that because I'm putting it in this bucket, that's going to go and feed the worms at the farm and it's going to come back to us as food, that that isn't waste, you know. And if I keep treating it as such, even like with the, using the word, maybe you'll never get there. There's a cute little barista in the cafe. Yeah. That was our first date, planting garlic out here. It's a partnership. Because we're good at different things. Or better at different things. I guess we do work well together because of that. Phil actually went and did an internship though. He actually had some training under his belt. I just fell into this because I love plants. I just had backyard full of pot plants for most of my life. How does it work not well, being a couple, <laughs> but being life farm partners? <laughs> Better than being a couple? It's, it's interesting because we met each other when we were... We both had a different plan in our life. We, we both were starting along a path. We sort of got smushed together because Phil was developing a composting system for in the cafe and developing a rooftop garden at the same time. And I invited him out for a garlic planting day. <laughs> and you know, the, the rest, rest is, is history. history. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, so we just, we're yearning for the same thing. Um, and not to say that it didn't work, because it has. Like our relationship is stronger than ever, you know. We're just not, we're just, the relationship just isn't normal. Well, we, we fell in love because of a, yeah. joint passion about yeah. wanting to grow food and do something good for our community and and I don't know give our lives more meaning than what it had when we were just working in the city but it's also <laughs> so much easier now that we're not together because we don't feel the need to go on holidays together and so as long as one of us is at the farm it's not a problem so That's as true. long as Phil's here I can go away for the weekend and it is one of those things as well which is probably one of the reasons why Potentially that we're not together is because we do spend every day together or on the phone to each other talking about the business. And so it just makes sense that, that I think there's only so much space for someone. We, we needed an element of separation. <laughs> yeah. And we weren't willing to sacrifice the garden for that. Mm. That the garden had to stay. Yeah, one or the other had to give. It was yeah. either the relationship or the garden. I think we loved the garden more than each other. So. I'm glad we chose the garden. I really am. Man, it gives me far more joy <laughs> than you ever did. <laughs> did I? Did I? Oh, damn. That's harsh. I didn't say pleasure, though. I said joy. <laughs> Take that as a compliment, I guess. I think one of my biggest inspirations was a book that I read by a guy, um, a Japanese man called Masu, Masuoma Fujioka, and I think I pronounce his name wrong every time. But he wrote a, a book called One Straw Revolution, which was one of the founding models for what permaculture became. And it's all about natural farming, um, about observing how nature works. and. Um, sort of he honed into rice farming in a different way where he didn't flood fields and he observed how the bugs were interacting when the wheat when the um, rice straw was had fallen down and he would sow into that and not flood um, and he would test his productivity model against normal or traditional well, traditional um, flooding of the fields and he started over the years as his biomass increased to get higher and higher yields and so as that really inspired me to say, you know what, 
there's all of this mainstream agriculture saying that it can't be done on a small scale, can't be productive, it can't be profitable. Yet, you know, if you really tap into nature, it works 24-7. And it's, you just got to learn how to be observant and be patient. Like it's taken us, you know, three years to get an all right crop of zucchinis, you know, and, and it's luck as well. And you got to observe that. And observing that luck makes you not stress out so much, <laughs> which makes you more sustainable as a farmer. And so understanding that when you tap into nature as a farmer, you just, and you really, you really sort of observe, you just observe patience as well. Um, and realize that, you know, yes, we've got to make it all work. We have to diversify our business so that we're keeping things ticking over. So we do education as well as, you know, yield management, which are the bins that cycle the material around. So seasonally we run and, or try to run workshops around how to grow your own loop. Um, that factors in different types of composting, but generally it's around about, it, it, it's about um, nature appreciation and how those systems can work to strengthen our own relationships. Um, we also do farm tours that give people an impression of our farm and, and show them, take them on a loop of our garden. Um, but realistically, from an education standpoint, we're trying to teach people that um, everything starts with yourself, essentially. It's not our idea, it's an age old thing to say that you know the change comes from within. And so, in an education standpoint, we're trying to say that. that the first loop is yourself. Um, do right by yourself as much as you can and don't be too hard on yourself. And then start to build, work that loop out, bringing in more and more people. You know, it may not be the people that you wish it could be, but um, those people with that openness you put out will be drawn in. Yeah, you're developing relationships which then strengthen your loop continuously. The more relationships that you make and build the stronger your loop becomes and it sort of gets gets wider and wider and it makes it harder for the bad people to come in and break it <laughs> does yes yeah. good it's a for, it's a it's a force field because you create a bubble around your life so you feel like there's only good things that are happening around it but we want to turn this farm into an education center for people who want to do what we do or develop a concept based around something about what we do, whether it's learning how to worm farm, hot compost, seed raising. Uh, we have connections with people who are going to teach mushroom workshops out here, you know, biochar, natural building. Ali's dad's a builder. Um, and so there's, you know, stay tuned for far more educational opportunities out here in the future. We're reaching a balance. This has probably been the first season where our production is is humming like nicely, um, and it has so much to do with the strength of the relationships that yeah, you know. And it all came from you know respecting nature. That top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so much what? now. We because we know that this system works and we've proven to a lot of people in our community that this system works. The biggest support that we can get now is to make systems like this more of the norm. So if we have the ability to facilitate other people to be able to follow systems like this, it would be really, really beneficial for the movement. And that's where I hope the future leads for at least around this area, around Brisbane, hopefully for cities, Australia for, and the world. For cities, it's just too obvious to, to not do. Like it's we've got all these resources coming out. We don't want to send them too far away. A place like Brisbane, there's all these um, usable spaces with good access to water, which is a big part. But everyone, people who really want to do something, if they feel like they, they, the world's burning or whatever, grab a piece of land and start, you know, building it up and then build a community around it and stuff really happens. It's awesome. People respond to it. 
people flock to it. Great cafe. 